No, not the receipts. No, <laughs> Betty, don't do it. No, don't do it. And he's dead. <laughs> well, every word that comes out of his mouth is just a lie. That's crazy. I want to talk about something. I feel like it will be really interesting when it comes to like certain um, liberals. Uh, when it comes to certain, you know, like moderates, you can kind of tell that they're not necessarily as liberal as they say or moderate as they would want you to believe. Um, one of those people is Matt Taibbi. Now, Matt Taibbi is like an independent journalist, um, guy who's been around for a while. Um, he's an author. Some people talk about him. I personally don't know that much about him. I keep up with him a very small amount. I keep up with him with an incredibly small amount, but uh, not enough to completely have like give you a full rundown of his character. I just can't do that. What I can do is look at the things that I see from him and look at the things that he says about himself. And usually they're not good. That being said, it's always better to hear somebody talk for themselves about what they have to say about themselves and about the things that they believe instead of it just simply being about what you hear somebody else say that they said. So I think we should do that today. And uh, one person that he's been having beef with is uh, Mehdi Hassan. Mehdi Hassan, an MSNBC news reporter, um, progressive as far as I remember. Pretty cool guy, actually. Who has an incredibly interesting uh, point of view that I touch on every now and again. Um, there are like two people who I genuinely enjoy watching from time to time on MSNBC, and that's Chris Hayes and uh, Mehdi Hassan. And every once in a while, if he's been a good boy, Lawrence O'Donnell, but only every once in a while, nobody else. Rachel Maddow was too like wine mom lib pilled, and um, and I only watch Morning Joe um for when something goofy happens. As I only I only like look at clips of uh Morning Joe when like something goofy happens. But besides that, there's no reason for me to be there. It's too boomer core for me. It's true, Ali. Well, it's. It's true, Ali Velchi has some bangers. You're right. You're right. Who's the who's the guy who always loves the Don Lemon is fun? We're talking about MSNBC, not the not the failed uh network that, that is known as CNN. That's run by conservatives now. Who's who's the guy who always loves to quote rap lyrics in like the whitest way possible? Ari Melber. Melber Melber goes crazy. Melber goes crazy. I can't, you're right. I shouldn't leave out Velshi. Velshi actually went to like some BLM protests and he got shot by a, um, uh, by a cop. They shot him with a rubber bullet. So honestly, I, I respect the boy. So I can't necessarily, I can't hate on, I can't hate on him. I can't hate on him. I love Ari. Ari's a fucking goofball, bro. <laughs> Ari's a goofball. It's crazy how like CNN's contributors have like negative personality. Fox News's contributors are simply evil. And like MSNBC out of all like of out of like the big three news stations are the only ones that actually have like some flavor of personality to the people that they actually have on there. It's crazy. It's actually remarkable. And then like ABC and CBS are all just, are like um they're like infancy NBC. They have like a little bit of they got a little bit of uh the flavor in there. But you know you know, you ever eat some food and you know that they definitely put salt in it, but it's definitely not enough, right? It's it. They, there's salt in there to where you know they def. There's su they. There was some salt involved in this cooking, but y they they didn't when they tasted it. You know it's just not enough. Like they this definitely could have added like another splash. That that's what like CBS and ABC like contributors are like. MSNBC is the only one that's cooking with full mustard. You know. It's also most based. I think they have the highest proportion of based moments. Um, I wouldn't call them based. I think they have the highest proportion of based moments. They even had Sam Cedar as a contributor for a, for some for a good amount of time. Um, that being said, that being said, um, Matt Taibbi and Mehdi Hassan have been back and forth for some time. They have not been liking each other. Mehdi Hassan has not enjoyed Matt Taibbi's presence, and since uh, Matt Taibbi has become kind of like has been kind of slowly drifting to the right a bit and also become like a lap dog for um, Elon Musk. Mind you, once again, one of the richest people in the entire world um, and who like like put out and editorialized um, uh, the Twitter files that was happening a while ago. Remember that? Remember like the Twitter files that was happening for like 
two days and then everybody was like all right and then moved on and then there were and then there were like eight more like twitter files that came out and nobody cared nobody on the right cared nobody on the left cared nobody in the middle cared no honestly like nobody on the right started to care either it was just wild who was the one that shared the files yeah matt taibbi and then like some other woman i, I forget her name anyways matt taibbi like Elon sent the files to Matt Taibbi, and then Matt Taibbi told you what he thought was important out of the files. And in, like, a Twitter thread, instead of actually, like, writing something that, that, for, like, in a blog post or something, like a, like a normal adult would make when regarding, like, one of the largest media platforms on the entire world. Anyways, editors, cut this down a bit. Editors. They had a little scuffle. They had a little kerfuffle. Um, Mehdi Hassan and um, Taibi on the Bird app not too long ago. Because Matt Taibi was calling out Mehdi Hassan for thinking that, it's, that like, the Twitter files were not important. Which they weren't. <laughs> at all. <laughs> uh, it, in the slightest. And so he, like, he called him like a loser and like uh, owned by uh, big tech or something. As he's working as the lap dog of one of the biggest techiest people uh, in the entire world. Um, Mehdi Hassan called out um, Taibi for saying that uh, Ma- called out Matt Taibi for saying that like Elon Musk is some sort of like great um, hallmark for society and actually cares about censorship, even though he's working, even though he bent the knee to one of the most brutal right wing authoritarian regimes in the in the world, the uh, uh, regime uh, controlling India at the moment that literally asked Twitter to silence its opposition. So people can't find out how bad they actually are. And Elon said, oh, sure, 100%. And so, and so, the fight began. And this is how it went, at least a little bit of it. You talk a lot about the election integrity project in the Twitter files, which Stanford and the University of Washington founded to monitor attacks on our elections. Um, And... You say some stuff about them that a lot of your critics say is not true, and that affects your credibility. You said the EIP was founded in response to the government dropping its proposal for a disinformation government. Well, there you are. We're quoting you on screen. It wasn't. It was formed two years earlier. Uh, you suggest it was government-funded, even though during the 20 election, 2020 election that you're covering, it wasn't. Uh, you say they labeled 22 million tweets as misinformation in the run-up to the 2020 vote. They didn't. Uh, they, got, they flagged 3,000 election misinformation information tweets for labeling so you were only 21 million 997,000 off and you also um, claim the a rounding error the eip was let me finish the question you can come back in you also claim the eip was partnered with the government cybersecurity and infrastructure agency cisa to censor twitter but you mix up cisa CISA, a homeland security agency, with the Center for Internet Security, the CIS, which is a non-profit. In fact, you added an A to CIS. I think people can see it there uh, in brackets uh, to make that false claim. It's just error after error, Matt, on just this one That's topic. Error. But the other, but the other ones aren't. The, uh, no, no, the, the, the twenty-two million, million number came from their own report. Yeah, where did the, it, it came from? A report in March. Tw- do you know what the twenty-two million number is, Matt? Can you tell me? Because we checked. Twenty-two million is the number of tweets about election misinformation that were just that they just mapped. How many tweets were they? The ones they actually flagged to Twitter before the election. Twenty-two million came after the election. It wasn't in the run-up. They flagged three thousand. So you were off by twenty-one million nine hundred ninety-seven thousand. They said a lot of things. I I, I, I stand by my story. I mean, they, they, they said, like, a lot of things. Uh, so, it, it, just in case you kept up, Matt Taibbi lied and said that they flagged 21 million tweets as election misinformation. That's a lie. What they actually did is they labeled 21 million tweets as talking about election misinformation. And he got the date of when it was happening wrong because he was trying to imply that this happened specifically to change the outcome of the election or to make people dumb or uninformed about what was going on um uh in 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 like the country to keep them ignorant so they vote the way that they want to and by that way he would mean like for democrats and not for republicans because they'd be silencing real. republican conspiracy theories leading up to the election it's it's just a simple 
It's simply like nothing more than just a lie. You stand by what's You stand by 22 million were flagged in the run-up to the election, even though that number came in March 2021, which was after the election. No, that's, this came in their report after the election. Which was about some, to some total of tweets that they counted on the election. What they flagged to Twitter was 2,980 tweets, I believe. So that's nowhere that's near 22 million. Come on, uh, I've, come on I've, what? You got something wrong. You got CISA wrong. Personally. Why did you add A? Okay, Matt, why did you add A in square brackets? Do you understand why people worry about it? I actually thought that. And why I did you fix it? I, we, I just at. checked the tweet. He read it. Just so you know, this is the guy who conservatives are like filtering their info it, just so you know no nobody else got like the actual like information and the files and like all of this stuff and like the reports besides like matt taibbi and like the fucking other woman i, 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 don't, I don't know her name was it barry weiss i forget may not be to like tweet out so every single error that they make that doesn't get corrected is just simply lies that will not get corrected He's not going to go back and edit those tweets. And if he did, and if he does now, it's already too late. They've been out for forever. <laughs> He's just <laughs> like, I didn't even know about all of this because I didn't read that. I didn't read like that, that deep into it. I want to see like the most important claims uh, coming out of it. And all of those most important claims that they made, like trying to say that the Biden administration used their power in office to subvert the election, even though the Biden administration wasn't in office and simply asked Twitter to take tweets down that were private information, stolen from private information. That's simply it. At the end, also, Donald Trump did the exact same thing, but the only difference is he actually was in office. But whatever, I guess. Before I came on air, it's been three weeks since it was flagged to you. Why not fix it? Do you not have editors I at the record? I, haven't, I didn't realize that until now. Okay, and what about the date? Nice you got the date wrong when it was found. You said it was founded in response to the disinformation board. That was last year. Well, because Stamos is saying in the, in the video that, uh, you know, we were sort of creating... <laughs> Speak, Junior. Spit it out, brother. What is happening? <laughs> oh, this is what happens when your life being an internet journalist gets um, met with um, somebody who's actually spent time around, like, actual journalists. This is... This shit is crazy, bro. Is this what happens when you sell your soul to, like, the conservative crowd? Is, is this how it goes? Just simply lying? Filled with, filled with errors? Just will never be touched again? I, I just figure this out? Literally right now? Thanks to my for the five. Really appreciate you. Once you have people handing you things, telling you, here's the story... That's it. You're done. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. He tried to, like, feign journalistic integrity by, like, making a tweet about how once you have people, like, start to hand you things, once people start to go to you as their journalist, not like you reach out and they agree to, like, interviews and stuff. They go to you. They went journalist hunting. They went journalist, like, shopping. And they went to you. You're done. And it and, and like that's as far as I know, that's the most correct thing that Matt's ever said. The only problem is that it it's exactly who he is. Only if he would have stuck to the path that he at least wanted to look like he would be. Can you imagine how like better of a person he would be? Like if Elon Musk goes to him and says, "Oh yeah, this is my guy to release this story," a multi hundred billionaire goes to you as a journalist to talk about his multi-billion dollar company in the news for a, a to that will back up the exact point that he said that was going to be made, you're done. <laughs> that is not real journalism. It, and honestly, I, it seems like this waffling is proof of that at the moment. I, I didn't realize that until... Like earlier, didn't didn't he say like, well, they like wrote a lot of stuff. I stand by my. Well, they like wrote a lot of stuff. You're the journalist. But the other, but the, the other ones aren't. In, in March, tw do you know what the 22 million information came after the election? It wasn't in the run-up. They flagged 3,000. 21,997,000. Said, said, they said a lot of things. I, I I I stand by my story. Nice one. They said a lot of things. I stand by my story. Nice one. 
uh, the good job, Mr. Impartial Journalist. You're so good at your job. Just parroting whatever like the, the richest person in the room uh, tells you to give off. That's literally journalism, bro. That is the most journalism. I've never seen journalism more journalistic than this. Wow, that's crazy. He's eating him alive. He is, he is like skewering this boy. Boy, bro is squirming. Board. That was last year. Well, because Stamos is saying in the, in the video that uh, you know, we were sort of created to fill the gaps. Uh, no, no, that's not, that's not what you say in the tweet. That's not what you say in the tweet. SIO yes, was created in 2018. No, no, no. You say, this is what you say, that it was, the EI pay was created after the public uproar paused the disinformation board. That's wrong. You need to correct that as well, don't you? After the... Uh, that's what no, your words, you take to quote you. After public uproar paused the Orwellian disinformation governance board, Stanford created the EIP. Man, wait, you know what? I need to, I, I need to move my camera so you can see this dude's face. Man, local man shocked to, shocked to hear words he said mere moments ago. <laughs> what the fuck is, is this? This is his attempt at journalism, really? That's it? Look at his face, bro. He's flabbergasted to see his own words. It's crazy what happens when you don't do any research before you speak as a journalist. That's your job. That's wrong. Well, uh, that's what they say. I, 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 uh, my, well, you my, could my you could... are you a journalist or are you a parrot? Cause it boy, cause boy, if you're a parrot, you can hop up on that perch. You can start, you can start squawking for me, buddy. <laughs> I'll feed you a cracker if you want. Are you a journalist or are you a parrot? Which one? Which way? Listen, it's 2023, the year of our Lord. It is Biden's America, so you can identify however you want. You can be parrot gender if you want. It's okay. We won't bully you. You will have to wear one of those little bird diapers. But like, other than that, like, it'll be fine. Check. You don't need sources, Matt. You could check the EIP website. It says it was created in 2020. Well, that's the date that I just said. And the, the disinformation board was 2022. Okay. All right, well then that is an error. I'm <laughs> you know what? I, I completely see why Elon Musk picked him to release his like release his stuff. I, I see it. I, I completely, I 100% see it now. It's literally all starting to make sense. Isn't it? What do you think guys? It is, it, I think it's starting to make up. I think it's starting to make perfect sense why he picked him to like parrot his, um, uh, his like report that he had put together. No critical thinking, <laughs> no care to check. He believed the story. So he just ran it as is. It all felt that way. It all felt that way. So he just ran it as it as is. It's not it's also not even over yet. It's not even over yet. So here is the deadly segment where Medi talks about their kerfuffle that they had on Twitter. And it's Oh Lord, does it get bad? <laughs> oh. Would you like to criticize Musk now? No, I don't. I don't particularly want to. Um, I, it, look, I don't I want didn't, to. Okay. I didn't criticize him really before, uh, and you know he doesn't. You know, I'm not sure about before, but he kind of like he like, kind of like owns a massive media company now. I think that what the Twitter files are uh, is a step in the right direction. Um, but it's the same Twitter that he's running right have now. I disagree with him. If you want to ask, I, I think understood, this Matt. Well, I'll ask you a specific one. You, you ask, ask you a specific. You to... No, 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 no. It's not in bad faith, Matt. Sorry. You it say that Twitter... Is. Hold on, hold on. Let me finish my question. You're saying that he's good for Twitter and good for speech. I'm saying he's using Twitter to help one of the most right-wing governments in the world censor speech. I will criticize that. Will you? I have to do... I have to look at the story first. I'm not looking at it now. Hold on, hold on. I, I, I posted the story two weeks ago. You tweeted oh, at me. Been, invite... I don't watch the Mehdi Hassan show. You do. Actually, you do, because you tweeted at me saying, invite me on the show, and I'll tell oh, you my shit. views. Here you are. No, what you, is your view? No! There it is. You... No! Not the receipts! No! <laughs> oh, Mehdi, don't do it! No, don't do it! He's dead! <laughs> 
But every word that comes out of his mouth is just a lie. That's crazy. This is this is why he's on the show. Just so you know, this tweet response is actually why he's on Mehdi Hassan. This is why he's on MSNBC right now. Okay, him getting like cooked alive is this is why. Wow, is under the request of the Indian government. Apparently, Twitter has blocked the accounts of several high profile Canadians, including the NPD leader Judmeek Singh. Jud uh Jugmeet, if I remember correctly, like. Like Representative Singh is um he's Indian, right? And he talks about like the repression and the like brutality and the civil rights violations of like the uh Modi government. Right? Jagmeet Singh, he's a Canadian um Green Party leader? If I'm he's the Canadian Green Party leader, if I remember correctly. Who is um who is Indian, at least part Indian. And then Matt Tai and then the uh, Mehdi Hassan goes, I'm sure Matt Taibbi is all over this. Bodied L, because obviously he's not, okay? Obviously he's not. And then, because he couldn't care less. He cares, uh, he cares about sucking off uh, Daddy, <laughs> Daddy Elon uh, and literally nothing else. Do you want to condemn Elon? Or do you want to, like, criticize Elon? No, I don't want to. Yeah, I bet you don't. I, I bet you got a lot of great clout off of you being handpicked as a journalist for a multi-billionaire. Good job, buddy. You're really doing the Lord's work. I really giving the information to the people, weren't you? Why don't you invite me onto your show to talk about it? Since you absolutely sure I'll <laughs> of what I'll say. You know what? <laughs> Matt, I'm on Matt's side here. He's right. Medi couldn't possibly have imagined that he would have made this tweet and not known a single thing about the issue. And not only that. Go on to talk about it with still not reading a single thing about it. I on that would have shocked me if I'm gonna be honest with you. I would have prepared to have like a whole conversation about like what def what came out, what we don't know, like the the like Modi's government role and everything. Matt Tibi's like, nope, haven't heard it, haven't heard of it. What are you talking about? At me saying, invite me on the show and I'll tell you my views. Here you are. Oh, what you, is your view? I, I on didn't there watch it is. You. There it is, look. Yeah, and you said, look, we'll read your words. Why don't you invite me on your show to talk about it since you're so absolutely sure of what I'll say? You're right, I'm not sure. What is your view on Musk working with Modi to censor speech? That's I'd have what to you ask would, him you... about the particulars about it, but listen, no, this came out the nothing. first time. Uh, I think it was Twitter Files number six. I'll have to ask. Wait, did he say you have to ask him about it? Uh, I think it was particulars about it, but listen. Modi to censor speech. That's what you ask about the particulars about it, but I'm gonna have to ask him about. You're a journalist. Uh, I'm gonna have to listen. Um, I don't have an opinion on this. I have to wait for um Elon Musk to tell me exactly what he believes, and then I'll tweet it out as a as a Twitter thread, and then it'll be right there for you. <laughs> listen, th this came up the first time. Uh, we know this Twitter happened. files number six when. When you said uh, after this, this was a big one that we had done about the relationship between Twitter, the FBI and the DHS. And as that story came out, you were giving me a hard time about tweeting through it, I think was the, was the quote. Essentially, yeah. you said you don't. So essentially, you're arguing that this information was not in the public interest, that I somehow shouldn't have done this story that I'd worked hard on. Uh, because Hey, you saw all those errors earlier? Bro said he worked. <laughs> what, did your pinky get tired after hitting, co uh, after hitting a copy paste? So much control? Uh, did your pinky get tired after holding a control C? Poor baby. He was like, I had to take an ibuprofen. I was holding control C, control P so much. Hours, hours. Because Elon Musk tweeted something? You don't think that story no, I said was he banned journalists? I think if. No, hold, hold on, Matt. If you're doing a story about free speech on Twitter and the head of Twitter bans journalists, yeah, I think most people. By the way, Barry Weiss, your partner in crime on that, your, sorry, your colleague, your reporter, sorry for that euphemism, your reporting colleague, she actually did call him out. So it's weird that Barry Weiss had more integrity on that, some might argue, your critics might say, than you did. <laughs> Lord, holy shit. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh, uh, absolute clownery, bro. He he inter he called him on. He literally called him on and was like, 
and was like, bring me onto your show, Mehdi Hassan. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what I think. And apparently, he doesn't think. No words. <laughs> Brain empty, okay? No thoughts. It's quite sad indeed. Call the cops who witnessed a murder? It's just, it's just honestly ridiculous. I, I couldn't even, I, I would, like, and he's, <laughs> I don't even know if I, what I would do if I was in this situation. Like, this is just embarrassing. I know he doesn't care because, like, the people who watch him don't care about him telling the truth. That's why they, that's why people keep coming to him. And I would imagine that he would have a lot other, like, conservatives and, like, right leaning people come to him sometime soon to, for this exact same thing after they realize how little critical thinking and how little actual research he actually does before posting what they tell him to post. It makes a lot of sense, honestly. It's all coming together. He mixed up, like, actual journalism with, like, conspiracies that he wanted to be true. <laughs> the drooling fool. And apparently it's so bad that he's been tweeting about it all day. Re-MSNBC, new unlocked. Nice one. He posted this literally after he got cooked for inaccurate reporting on MSNBC. Talk about butthurt. I posted this 10 seconds into the interview. <sighs> Uh, <laughs> I am, I am not mad. I am not molding and I am not, I, listen, I am, I do not feel bad about my interview on MSNBC. How can Mehdi Hassan demand I comment on something I haven't covered? I.E. E.G. Modi. That's, then why did you get mad at the original tweet when it was 100, when he read you like a book? Why did you get mad when he read you like a book? <laughs> Instead of going, bring me onto your show, I'll talk about this. Like a, like a bot, you should have gone, you write, I'll read up into, I'll, you write, I'll read into this. Sorry, I didn't know this was happening. Because I, because I have journalistic integrity and I care about the things that I'm saying are true. <laughs> what you're going to say next is, it's just, it's just sad. How dare you bring me on after I asked to come on about something that I told you to bring me on for? And that's why he's mad. And that's why he's mad. You should have just shut up if that's the case. You should have simply shut up. <laughs> uh, I think Betty actually responded to this, if I remember correctly. Yeah, here it is. I don't want to get into a Twitter back and forth with you while we're already uh, when we already did a 22 minute interview, but I did have to fact check you again today. I didn't demand anything. You tweeted publicly at me two weeks ago asking to come on the show and address and address the Twitter India censorship issue. Oh, no, he left it up. <laughs> oh, the tweets made moments before a disaster. <laughs> Oh, he left it up. That's so sad. Are these goofballs expecting you to condemn Indian courts? Do you think he'd say the same exact thing if, like, the Supreme Court said? Yes, actually, for one. And do you think he'd say the same thing if, like, the Supreme Court told, like, Twitter to take down, like, misinformation on, on, their, on their website? I think he'd be screeching from the roofs that we're in, like, fascist, communist, uh, Marxist, Leninist co uh, propaganda mode or something. I do not believe that he would be, that they'd be, like, on the same page here at all. Lol, bro. That shit's crazy. That's crazy, bro. I can't even imagine taking an L this big. Wait, no, now he's trying to bring up... Uh, older tweets. Does Mehdi Hassan believe that the information in the Twitter files thread, which derailed, detailed the bureaucratic structure set up between the FBI, DHS, and Twitter for mass forwarding moderation requests to people on, on both right and left, wasn't newsworthy? This wasn't in the public, this wasn't of the public's interest. It's just not interesting. I'm sorry, it's not interesting. <laughs> it's not. I did, did, wait, did we make a, a video on the Twitter files? I think we made one, probably. Like talking about some of it, but like, yeah, just, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you, bro. It's, it's not interesting. <laughs> it's not interesting. The Biden 
campaign asked Twitter to take down tweets. Some literally were like stolen pictures and revenge porn. And others were just mean tweets. And then Twitter could choose whether to take them down or not. And then the DHS told Twitter, watch out for terrorists. And now, like, he thinks that this is, like, newsworthy. It's, it's, it's really not. I'm sorry. And honestly, the proof that everybody's in the proof in the pudding is that the fact that, like, basically everybody forgot about it. And nobody, even the people who made a big stink about the Twitter files, even cares about it much anymore. They're not getting likes about it anymore. So, like, it's kind of over. Did you go back and fix the lies and misinformation in your half-hearted reporting? As every responsible journalist does, I made corrections as soon as I became aware on them. And don't ever delete editor's notes again, unlike the network I was on today. I'm a good journalist, guys. I'm a, I promise you, I'm, I'm a great journalist. I don't need to... Sorry. Oh, you did not address the issue. I don't need to address the issue. I'm responsible for the things that I write and cover. What about Modi? Questions w were an attempt to get me to participate in deflecting attention away from my own reporting. Why'd you ask him to ask you about it then? You asked! You can't go who asked when you literally did! What is happening? How stupid is this guy, bro? <laughs> when... <laughs> You asked, you asked to come on for that issue, bro. It's so sad. Holy shit, this is crazy. <laughs> bring me on my, bring me on your show to talk about it. Also today, he's still tweeting. I was given a hard time for saying it was honor to speak to Congress, but his son said it wouldn't have been an honor to speak to a house of un-American uh, affairs committee incredibly given incredible given it was uh, clearly democrats who acted like the huac members that day so true bro so true bro keep on digging you can do it keep on digging i believe in you it's remarkable l's wild remarkable it's just i don't know man every single time every every single time it's crazy yeah they're only yeah uh, it's, it's, it's the same video but crazy bro holy and we're, and we're gonna have to talk about barry weiss because barry weiss did the same exact thing like yesterday like barry it was worse actually well i can't necessarily say it's worse but maybe worse barry weiss lied about a, a 15 year old um uh to drum up like anti-trans rhetoric um the other day um and then the 16 year old literally came out and just like suplexed Barry Weiss and then she just ran away <laughs> over her like batshit crazy low effort reporting it was it was remarkable it was remarkable but we, I think we're going to talk about that tomorrow because I don't have all the information on it at the moment oh sorry I didn't see you there if you're enjoying the content hit the subscribe button if you don't it'll make boo very sad I know a bunch of you who are watching are not subscribed join the frenzy you won't regret it <laughs> thank you boo